Hi guys, and welcome to this tutorial for Electronica. In this video, I'll be going over some of Electronica's advanced settings and user interface elements. I'm going to start by looking at the properties dialog box. To open it, click on this button at the bottom left hand side of the main window. This first drop down box allows you to set the resolution at which video is rendered. There are a few things to note here. When you change this setting, output windows will be resized to this size. If you resize these windows, however, the rendering resolution won't change with it. So for example, if I set this to the lowest resolution, and then resize the window, you can see that the image becomes pixelated. Likewise, if the output is a second monitor, the resolution of the output is dictated by this setting. If you use the dimension module, video will be automatically anti-aliased when the output is a different size than the rendering resolution. Essentially, it allows you to resize footage with smoothing. This second drop down box allows you to set the target frame rate for the project. Note that this frame rate isn't guaranteed, and you need to keep an eye on the frame rate counter here and your module CPU usage bars here. The loop length drop down box allows you to select the loop length used by modules such as Loop 107 and Rhythm Box. The compression drop down box allows you to choose whether to use JPEG compression in the modules, which can help improve performance. The MIDI in panel lists MIDI devices recognized by Electronica. I've connected an APC40 controller to my PC, and I've also installed the Loop BE1 virtual MIDI cable driver. I'll talk about these more when I cover MIDI in depth in a later video. To use a MIDI device in Electronica, click on it so that its name is highlighted. It's possible to use multiple MIDI devices to control Electronica. You can select more than one simply by clicking on them. The MIDI out drop down box allows you to select a MIDI device to pass the incoming MIDI onto. The preset drop down box allows you to select which MIDI program change channel to use to select the presets. The slider allows you to select the DirectX sound buffer latency. I'm not entirely certain if this affects incoming audio, outgoing audio, or both. From memory, lower values may cause electronica to react more rapidly to incoming audio, but may also result in the audio glitching. However, the setting might apply to outgoing audio, so unless you're sure of what you're doing, I recommend leaving this at its default setting. Incidentally, it's worth mentioning that the audio in and audio out modules support ASIO if you have ASIO hardware, or if you use the software ASIO for all. Finally, this checkbox allows you to enable or disable tooltips when hovering over controls with the mouse. Tooltip messages are usually also shown in the status bar. If you right-click on an empty portion of the main window and select Background, you can choose from a selection of different background color themes. I am now going to quickly add some modules to the set that illustrate a few more user interface elements. Now that I've set up my project, I'm going to start rendering. I want to draw your attention to the bar here at the bottom corner of each module. This bar displays the amount of CPU time being used by the module. If I change the settings on the module like so, you can see that the bar turns red. This indicates that the module is causing the frame rate to drop, as we can see also by looking at the frame rate counter at the bottom right hand side of the main window. The frame rate also drops if the combination of these bars from all modules exceeds one full bar. In large projects, you can improve performance by turning modules off. This is done by clicking on the module power button, which is found at the top right hand corner of each module here. Turning off a module generally stops it from passing on incoming audio to other modules, so note that this isn't a bypass switch. You can move modules around on the rack by grabbing them on the right hand side here and dragging them. Personally, I like to always have my master output module over the top of the rack. You can select multiple modules from moving by shift and clicking them in order to select more than one. If you change the module control value, you can reset it to its default value by putting the mouse cursor over it and pressing the Alt key on your keyboard. There are two ways you can select tone values for controls such as this one on the ASTSS module. You can either double click on the control, which turns the mouse cursor into a color picker, Notice that the gradient bar appears at the bottom of the main window where you can pick colors from, or you can click anywhere on the screen to pick a color. Alternatively, you can click on the box and move up and down for luminosity, left and right for hue, 
and if you hold control up and down for saturation. This is useful for smoothly changing between colors. To delete the module, right click on it and select delete module. This right click menu sometimes has additional module specific options, for example on the VP pen and rhythm box modules. Okay, that's it for this video. Leave any questions you have in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, subscribe to my channel. I'll be uploading more videos on Electronica soon.